Well, many thanks for that kind introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. War Eagle. War Eagle. Uh, a little bit, a uh, little bit weak and infirm now. Let's try that again. War Eagle. War Eagle. Mr. President, my uh, best military assessment is that uh, the class of 2016 is fired up and ready to graduate. <laughs> President Gouge, thanks for inviting me to be a part of this very special day. As an Auburn graduate, it's a real treat for me to come back here to the Plains. Graduates, as Dr. Gouge pointed out, you have been very fortunate to benefit from the support of many wonderful people, to include the phenomenal leadership here, team here at Auburn. The administrators, the staff, the faculty are among the very best in our nation, and they have played a significant role in your success. As has or have the families and the loved ones of each and every graduate. You know, it's often said that the only people happier than the graduates at a commencement ceremony are the parents of the graduates. They, along with other family members, have loved you and supported you. They've been among your biggest cheerleaders, and so, so today is their day, too. And graduates, let's give everyone who's loved you and supported you another well-deserved round of applause. Dr. Gooch mentioned that it's Mother's Day, and graduates, I hope that all of you remember to wish your mothers a happy Mother's Day. Mothers are a tremendous gift, and they have an impact on our lives unlike any other person. So if you haven't wished your mom a happy Mother's Day, make sure that you do so. And to all the mothers in the audience, please accept my best wishes on this very, very special day. You know, I retired from the military last week after a career spent in uniform serving my country. And it wasn't easy to leave an organization that I love. I quickly learned after joining the Army as a brand new second lieutenant that I love being around soldiers and leading them. And I love being a part of a winning team. Now, most of you probably don't have plans to serve in the military, and that's okay, that's understandable but I would point out the importance of serving others and perhaps serving your country in some capacity during your lifetime. And you can do so in a number of ways. And in doing so, you will have a positive impact on the organizations that you're a part of in your communities and perhaps even the world. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? And I do believe that each of us should frequently ask ourselves this important question. And if the answer is that I could be doing more, well, then I encourage you to find ways to do more. You should always strive to make a difference through your actions. You know, while I was in the Army, I got up every day around 4.30 in the morning to start my daily routine. Of course, now I'm retired, and I can sleep as late as I want to. And yet I still find myself waking up at 4.30. And maybe there's a science whiz in the crowd that can tell me how to reset my circadian rhythm. But a lot of you also probably get up early and go for a run or go to the gym. And as students, you probably felt like you spent more time at the library or in the science lab or in the computer lab than you did in your own dorm rooms. And the self-discipline that that behavior requires is highly commendable. And if you maintain that self-discipline going forward, it will pay dividends in your lives and in your careers. As the Greek philosopher Aristotle wrote, we are what we repeatedly do. 
Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit." End of quote. And so my first piece of advice to you, as a guy who spent a lot of years in the military, my advice to you is to be your own drill sergeant. Push yourselves, be disciplined, and be willing to work hard. And recognize that in order to be successful, you will need to master your craft, whatever that is. And you master your craft by being disciplined and by doing the necessary reps and sets. And I don't mean just the physical reps and sets, but just as important are those mental reps and sets. You know, as a military commander, I had the opportunity to play a key role in several seminal events over the past 13 plus years. Among them was the Iraq invasion in March of 2003. As the Assistant Division Commander for Maneuver for the 3rd Infantry Division, I helped to spearhead that invasion. And I would tell you that we did not win that fight in the record 22 days that it took to, for us to get from Kuwait to Baghdad. We won it in the weeks and months leading up to the start of the invasion. We trained day in and day out. And because our leaders and our troops were well trained and they were well equipped and physically and mentally ready, we entered that fight certain that we had the upper hand and that we would be successful. And we were successful. Of course, it wasn't enough that we had the best individual soldiers and sailors and airmen and Marines on the face of the earth, although we did. But what ultimately enabled our success was the fact that we had the very best team on earth. And I cannot emphasize enough how important that distinction is, ladies and gentlemen. The most successful people in life are not concerned simply with their own success. They are motivated by the organization's success and the accomplishment of the mission. And so my advice to you is, as you go forward, always seek to be a team player. Be willing to put your oar in the water and be willing to row hard, recognizing that in the end you will be successful because the teams that you support are successful. Of course, one of the qualities that you will find common among great leaders and effective team players is humility. Humility enables you to recognize your strengths as well as your weaknesses. And it also enables you to continue to grow and learn and to make a difference in the lives of others. And oh, by the way, you can usually count on the folks around you to help keep you humble. You know, last week I was having dinner with some friends at a restaurant, and out of the corner of my eye, I spotted a young boy who kept edging closer and closer to our table. He was holding a pen and a piece of paper, and he appeared to be interested in getting my autograph. I felt pretty good about that. And finally, he came up to me, and I said hello, and I was about to reach for the pen and paper, and he said to me, excuse me, sir, are you the guy from the Allstate commercials? Surprised, I said, well, no, I'm General Lloyd Austin. I'm a four-star general in the Army. And the boy looked at me visibly disappointed, and he, <laughs> said, and he said, oh, okay, sorry to bother you, sir, and he walked away. <laughs> and as he did, my good friend, who I was having dinner with, laughed, and he said, hey, Lloyd, you know, for a minute, that young man thought you were somebody important. <laughs> You know, I've actually met Dennis Haysbert, who is the, the actor that plays in those uh, commercials. And he also, for you, t you TV series 24 fans, he also played uh, President Palmer in that TV series. He is quite an impressive man. 
and, uh, and I enjoyed having a conversation with him, although brief, but when I was talking to him, I did advise him on one thing. I said, Dennis, you need a little bit more bass in your voice. <laughs> that is, if you want to sound more like me. <laughs> he didn't find that humorous. He's a great guy, and then if, it's, if you're listening, I'm, I'm kidding. He's a big guy. Now, some of you are probably thinking, this is it. I'm going to get my diploma. I'm done with my studies. And well, I hope that's not the case. You see, my advice to you is to keep learning. Never, never stop learning. That's one of the things that I committed to early on in my career, and that is to be a lifelong learner. I recently brought a new iPhone and a Mac computer, and I'm learning how to use both of those devices. And a few days ago, I figured out how to program my iPhone so that I can control my, the, the, the speakers for my stereo throughout my house using my iPhone. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and I was pretty proud of myself. Of course, shortly after I figured out how to make it all work, it promptly stopped working. And so I've got some more learning to do. But in all seriousness, I would encourage all of you to commit yourselves to being lifelong learners. And don't limit yourself. Seek to learn about a lot of different things and be willing to take some risk. Wander outside of your comfort zone every once in a while. You know, I was a young captain, a young ranger qualified infantry officer, and I came here to Auburn early on in my career and I studied counseling. And I actually spent some time volunteering as a counselor in a local clinic. And that was a very different experience for me, as you might imagine. But it also turned out to be the most rewarding experience of my career. And in the end, it made me a better leader and a better person. And finally, the most important piece of advice that I would offer you is to stay true to yourself. Never compromise your values. The one thing that will have the greatest influence on your life is the strength of your character. And the character of every individual is a reflection of his or her values. They serve as your guidepost in life. Strong values are the cornerstone of the Auburn, De Auburn Creed. Indeed, they are the bedrock upon which this great institution is built. And believe me when I tell you that they will remain the basis of your success going forward in both your personal and your professional careers. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a great day and it marks a tremendous achievement in each of your lives. And so my counsel to all of you as you look ahead as to what is a bright, no doubt a very bright future, my counsel is to stay true to your values, work hard, be disciplined, be your own drill sergeant, and strive to be the best at whatever you do in life and be willing to do the necessary reps and sets to master your craft. At the same time, pursue your passions and broaden your horizons and never stop learning and find ways to serve others, perhaps to serve your country in some capacity and strive to make a positive difference in the communities that you live and work in. You should know that as I look out at this great class of 2016, I am filled with optimism. Former students and graduates of Auburn University have won Grammys and Oscars. They have served the United States Congress. They have headed multi-billion dollar corporations. They've designed life-saving technologies. They've been to space and to war. They're Medal of Honor recipients. They've won the Super Bowl, the World Series, Olympic medals, Wimbledon, the Heisman Trophy, and the list goes on and on. And again, as I look out at this class, I am optimistic 
and I am optimistic because I am confident that you too will make important contributions and accomplish amazing things in your lives and in your careers. And you will make a positive difference through your actions. Ladies and gentlemen, I challenge you to go out and make history. And in doing so, you, each one of you, will help to make our world a better place. I wish you all the very best of luck. Congratulations on this great achievement and on what is a very important milestone in your lives. May God bless you. May he bless and keep safe those currently serving in harm's way. And may God continue to bless the United States of America, the greatest country in the world. War Eagle.